So we want to continue looking at recursive functions that deal with user input. And we previously wrote something that would just input a specified number of values and add them together. Then we made the extension that we didn't have to specify how many values. It was actually going to keep reading numbers and add them together as long as they were always positive. Of course, then we have limitation. They have to be positive. How could we get around that limitation? Well, we could make it so that we read a string from the user and then stop when they type in something like the word quit. Sum until quit. Here again, we're not going to pass in an argument because we don't have anything that we are counting down towards to give us the base case. Our base case comes from the user input. Val input equals read, in this case a read line, because I want to have the ability for them to type in quit. Now we're going to make the assumption here that they are either going to type in quit or they're going to type in a valid number. We'll see later on how we could deal with the possibility where they type in something that's not quit and not a number. So if input is equal to quit, and actually let's go ahead and let's do two lower case and trim. That way if they happen to type in quit in with a capital Q or all caps or we put spaces around it, uh, those types of things will will go away. They typed in quit, we're done adding up numbers, so we give back a zero. Else, no. Then we need to take this value, but as an integer, and add it to sum until quit the rest of the values. So instead of sum positive here, let's try calling sum until quit. One, two, three, four, five, quit, 15. Okay, so another successful function and we've gained the ability to not be limited in what types of numbers we can uh, add together. So what if I wanted to take an average, either with the sum positive or the sum until quit? It's easy with sum because whoever called this function to start with knows what value of n they typed in, so they just take the sum and they divide by n, and everything's happy. But if you have a sum positive or a sum until quit, you don't know how many values it was that the user input. So we need to do more work in order to to deal with that. And I'll go ahead and I'll take the first line there. And instead of calling it sum until quit, I'm going to call it sum and count. Just like before, it's not going to take any arguments, but the return value is going to change because I need now to return two values. One is going to be the sum, the other is going to be the count for how many times or how, how many different numbers we added together. I'm going to take the approach of dealing with quit. So we'll read in our value, we'll convert it to lower, lower case, we'll trim it. If they type in quit now, the return value is zero, zero. We have zero sum and zero numbers. Okay. Now, What if they didn't type in quit? Well, then we would need to do the same type of thing that we did here, but because we're turning, returning a tuple, it's not, we're not gonna be able to express it in quite as short a way. I'm going to declare variables that hold the two parts of this, the sum and the count. And those are gonna be equal to a recursive call of sum and count. And then I need to return a new tuple, which has the sum that we got from the recursive call plus what was just input. Just like we were doing up here, we take the input plus the recursive call. We need to do that as well. So input dot to int plus the sum. And for count, well, we've added one more number. 
So we, we read in a number here. This is going to give us back how many numbers it read. And so the total number read should be count plus one. We can come down here and test that. One, two, three, four, five. I'll go ahead and put six. Quit. The sum is 21, and it says there were six values. Now, if I had wanted to count to uh, calculate the average, I would have done something like this. I would have taken this call, stored it into a tuple pattern, so they would make a variable s and c for me, and then I would print line s divided by c. If I wanted this to not be a using integer division, I'd convert one of them to a double, like that. And we can try this again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Quit. 3.5 is the average value that we have there, which of course makes sense because 3.5 would be right in the middle of the numbers that we typed in. So this shows you how we can you know, expand ourselves with using string input and also how we can return tuples so that we're able to, basically we are counting up two different things. We're totaling two different things. We're totaling the sum and we're totaling the count and that way we have the ability to do things like calculate averages.